Luz Marina still prays for help on her way to work every day. In the past, nobody knew how long or how precarious the trip to work would be. But these days, the Metro Cable reliably carries passengers down through the valley towards the city of Medellin. Most of the settlements that have popped up here on the mountainside, like Vallejuelos, where Luz lives, are illegal. In Medellin, traffic is heavy and chaotic. I used to take the bus, which took 30 or 40 minutes to get to the city. So from my apartment to work, it took 50 minutes, sometimes an hour. And it was longer coming back in the evening because there's more going on at that time of day. Today, commuters need just 10 minutes to make the trip. The J line stops at four stations and ends right at the metro, the city's urban rail system. The metro also operates the cable cars. And the cable car tickets can also be used on the train. Luz's commuting time has been cut in half. Most mornings, the Metro Cable transports up to 3,000 passengers an hour through the valley. Each car can hold 10 people, and they depart every 12 seconds. Running a cable car system as a form of mass transit is no easy job. Luis Ramon Perez and his team are responsible for monitoring three lines carrying nearly 100 cars as they travel back and forth. It's a complicated job. A winter cable car is only in use for four or five months a year, but we only get one week a year to carry out all the basic maintenance needs for all our cable cars. The rest of the year there's no break. We transport more than 30,000 passengers a day. That's more than any other cable car in the world. The metro cable relieves Medellin's transportation chaos, and it takes pressure off the environment. Tomorrow we're doing 42 surveys in Santo Domingo. It has to be 42 by the end of the day. The National Center for Cleaner Production is conducting a survey of commuters. The group acts as a sort of environment ministry collecting important information using UN-sanctioned research and statistics methods. These employees are figuring out the amount of CO2 emissions the Metro Cable prevents every year. If we didn't have the Metro Cable project, people would probably have to depend on other means of transportation to get home or go to work, such as buses. But buses use diesel fuel, which leads to more CO2 emissions. And that has consequences for our environment. According to the figures compiled, the cable system prevents nearly 20,000 tons of CO2 emissions every year, and that allows the operators to sell emissions credits. The Medellin Metro also enjoys support from European environmental organizations, such as My Climate in Switzerland. The cable car system has been extremely effective in terms of both urban transit and environmental protection. So much so that the CEO is thinking about exporting the concept. Por eso es por lo que ya nos han invitado Rio de Janeiro has invited us to come and help them after they saw what we were doing. And Panama City has shown interest too. A lot of other cities have started to think about similar projects, both in Colombia and abroad. Metro Cable is successful for several reasons. Juan Alvaro Gonzalez takes us to Vallejuelos to show us how the company is building new infrastructure around the railway. 
Para nosotros los sistemas de transporte siempre Our transportation system is intended to stand for sustainable mobility. It should be environmentally sustainable and integrate the local communities, like this bridge that we built in the neighboring district, which is called Santa Margarita. More than 6,000 people live there. And now they can visit their neighbors here and use the cable cars. Luz Marina gets home earlier than usual these days. She lives with her two daughters and her grandchildren right under the cable railway. Like many of Medellin's poorer neighborhoods, Vallejuelos was once plagued by gangs and paramilitaries. I see. But when the cable cars arrived, things started to change. People didn't think they would get something like this here, of all places. They thought only the nice neighborhoods and the rich people would get the good things, not the poor. Esteban and Santiago are Luz's grandsons. They go to the computer center directly under the cable car station, where they can play games, listen to music, or do their homework. The center is part of the Metro's community project to improve the neighborhood. Security guards are on hand to watch over the expensive equipment. But still, there are signs that the quality of life is improving in Medellin's poorer districts. People identify with the metro. They feel like they have a stake in it. So our best inspectors are our customers. In the beginning, it seemed like the metro cable would never have a chance of overtaking conventional transportation in Medellin. But for most, the promise of getting home in 15 minutes while helping the environment has been a blessing. <laughs>